He's the man, he's the myth, he's the legend, he's the scientist with all the answers to all the questions. It's time for another episode of Alex's Science Corner. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, please, please, thank you, thank you. What's going on in the wild, <laughs> wide, wide world of science, my friend? First story we're going to talk about today is Curiosity Rover has found a spike in the methane in the Martian atmosphere. Now, this is something that for the past couple of years, the scientists that are studying Mars have been seeing. They've been seeing these spikes in methane, these methane bubbles appearing in the atmosphere. And they're trying to figure out what's going on because one of the possibilities that can cause methane to spike like that is life. There's also a lot of geothermal and geochemical things that can cause that also. But they want to get a handle on the causes of... Or is it... They want to figure out what's going on with the methane. Is it biological or is it geological? Right. They don't know that yet. But they've got this one indicator, and so they're trying to learn more about the indicator so that they can try and figure out what's causing it. Now, it has happened seasonally, but they've also found non-seasonal spikes. And they wrote about this one because this is the largest spike they've ever seen, where the Curiosity rover would be taking measurements. The methane would spike to about 10 times the background level and then drop back down again. So there are these methane bursts happening. So, so they're all living underground, is what we're saying. Or, mm, or it could be bacteria, no, but it also could that's be... That's not what they're saying. There's other... They don't know. First step is trying to figure out where these things are coming from and try and get a better handle on them. One of the challenges is they've only got like about four of the orbiters that are orbiting Mars right now can take a measurements, and most of those are telling you that you're seeing these spikes but not getting a good pinpoint good reading of, on them. Not yeah. get, exactly. Curiosity is on the ground, but it's in one spot, and it's seeing these spikes, and that's what this is, but that's after it's been released, and so they don't still don't know where it's exactly coming from. But more measurements, more, more information that they get, the more they're going to learn about it. So they're keeping Curiosity in the general vicinity of where it is because it's seeing the spikes Well, there? it just can't move very far. For the past seven years, it's been climbing a mountain. So it's not going to be moving around much more than that. I'm sorry. So. <laughs> the sound of music just popped in my head. <laughs> yeah, you could just see a robot waving its arms as it's crossing over the mountain. Okay. Singing, being, yeah, chased, every... being chased by Nazis. <laughs> yeah, cl- singing Climb Every Mountain. The No, the Nazis are on the moon. That's a side story that I'm not going to go into right now. <laughs> okay. There's some really, really bad movies that have, like, Nazis building UFOs and being on the moon. Um, I'm not going to go into more about that. I appreciate that. Next Thank story. You. Next story, Cause yeah. Because we, we want to talk about this. This is cicadas. They found that certain cicadas can get infected with this fungus. And this fungus, one of the effects the fungus has is it makes the cicadas extremely randy. It gets the cicadas high. It affects the do cicadas. You mean, do you mean horny? Yes, yes. It yeah, makes I them... was. I've never heard the yeah. term before. So. And I'm I thinking mean, I, of the I, old I Austin Powers. I see the Powers. articles. Yeah, yeah Austin Powers. I pa- see the Austin oh. Powers. Oh. Well, oh. Feeling randy, baby. And the reason why oh. this fungus does that is because as the fungus eats away at the cicada, it first infects the gut and then eats its way through the gut of the cicada. And the way the fungus spreads... As the cicada is falling apart, starting to lose its limbs and stuff, the cicada starts rubbing up against another cicada, and the fungus then infects the next cicada. So the cicadas that are trying to mate with another cicada are spreading this fungus all over the place. And this fungus also spreads as the cicada is flying around, but body parts of the cicada are uh, falling off until the cicada actually dies. So you've got these infected body parts falling all over the place spreading the fungus this is gruesome yes yes it I, is. this is like really gruesome yes they, i mean I, I almost feel bad for the cicadas uh well as one scientist called it they referred to it as the flying salt shakers of death 
because they as these cicadas are flying around they've got this major urge to mate with another cicada and as they're flying up around they're falling apart and then they start mating with another cicada and infect that cicada so it's uh so so the reproduction doesn't produce anything other than transmitting the, the yeah exactly the, yeah 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 so it just it drives the uh there is a hallucinogenic effect that they found and that's one of the things that they figure is causing the cicadas to go into that state so are they, are they a problem cicadas that uh, it, they are the very noisy bugs, and they have 17 year olds. Different types of cicadas have different life cycles, cycles right. where they will stay underground for 7 to 17 right. years, depending right. on the vari- species variant. They're not a problem species, they're just unusual. So, when they get this fungus, how do they contract it in the first place? I guess. Uh, well, either they get it from another cicada or they get it while they're living underground. Okay. Okay, so it's just, and so does that help keep the population down as opposed to eliminating I'm sure it doesn't help the cicada life cycle, but more than that, the article didn't say. Okay. Yeah, something about uh, somebody who's gross and just trying to, you know, I'm not going to say more than that. Okay. I'll let that, you see, this is the moments I wish Darnell was here because he'd really appreciate that kind of stuff right now. Darnell, if you're out there, feel free to call in and say something inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else to add? No, that's uh, about it. All right. For this if, one. You have any, if you have any questions about these stories or anything it's else science-related or indie-related, or no, I'm sorry, Formula One-related, feel free to call at 203-837-9924.